In today's show, we're going to talk about storing PowerShell objects in arrays and how you can use that to get information in and out of PowerShell. I've been doing a lot of it with some migration projects lately and thought it'd be a handy skill for you guys to learn. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras. Those guys. And in today's show, we're going to look at arrays in PowerShell. And the reason we're going to do this is one of the things I've been doing recently is a lot of migration projects. And as part of those migration projects, you know, I've created a bunch of new content, but then I need to kind of map it to the old content. So when I was going down the process and had to update some connection files, I had that mapping. So I did just that, right? I would write information out into my array build me a CSV file, and then in the next step of the process, I would do an import back um, and then work with that. And one of the upsides of this all is that I was doing that via PowerShell objects. So I created my own PowerShell object and put that in the array, and it's just easier for me to work with objects, right? Because that's the thing that I'm most comfortable with, and it should be the thing you're most comfortable with in PowerShell also. So it should be a lot of fun. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Now here you can see that I'm trying a new method. I'm doing all this via the ISE, so you can see everywhere we're going to go and talk about. Uh, so it kind of gives you an up, uh, up view of what that is. So definitely leave me a comment down below if this is a weirder format for those of you who have watched a lot of the videos. But I thought it was pretty cool. I'm going to clear my screen off here. Okay, so the first step here is we're going to create our array variable. So I called it dollar sign $Array to avoid any confusion. And we just do this. We say dollar sign $Array equals at and then uh, close and open or open and close parentheses. Now we all know that PowerShell generally just specify a variable and start throwing stuff in it, and PowerShell will figure it out. Well, with an array, it's much better to go ahead and define that ahead of time because now when we start sticking objects in there, it will know that it's putting objects into an array instead of saying, oh, you're handing me a, a file system object, I'll just make this variable a file system object type, and then we can't build on that. So with my arrays, I always define them. And at the top of my code, it always makes it nice because I know that's my array because it's the one thing that is hardly uh, named like that. All right, so then what we're going to do is we're going to grab all the processes, right? Pretty simple process. Uh, take all the processes and shove them into a processes um, variable. And so we'll just run those two lines, right? We'll highlight those, we'll run those, boom. And so now if we type in dollar sign process is scrolling by all the different processes on my machine. And, you know, while I've been doing all this in a uh, migration project, I want to do use get process for this video to try and make it a little more relatable for you because you probably don't have access to SQL Server Reporting Services or Office 365 or wherever my migration project might have been. So this is something you repeat on your own machine and then go apply to your Exchange migrations, your file share migrations, whatever it might be. All right. So now that we have all the processes um, in a variable, what we're going to do here is we're going to say for each, right? And so this says uh, for each process or proc, which is short for process, in the processes variable. So one of the weird things the first time I used the for each uh, variable like this, or not variable, uh, command line, is that you're like, well, what, what is this value, right? So I use dollar sign proc here. You can use anything you want. You can change that to be dollar sign Shane is awesome or dollar sign Shane talks too much or whatever you might want to be. This is just saying for every object that's in there, go ahead and um, you know iterate through those and use this as the name for the, each object that's in the pipe. So a lot of people will just do for you know dollar sign P and it would work the same way. I would just have to go down here and fix all the calls and make sure I was calling P. So. I try and do things that are more um, relatable, right? So proc is good. You could have used process, but I thought for the video processes and process were too close. So anyway, I used proc. Okay, so for each proc and processes, and then we got curly braces, right, for that uh, setup. And then here what I did is I went again and did an if statement. Um, in my migration, it was, you know, if file type equals this, but for here, you know, I just did if proc WS, and so you're like, wait, what is WS? Well, it's working set. But how did I figure that out? Well, one of the ways that you can figure this out, if you're working with a new object and you're not really for, uh, familiar, is I might do something like this. I might say, all right, for each dollar sign, right, and we'll just do something different. PP in dollar sign processes, 
All right, because we said that, that uh, dollar sign PP doesn't matter, it can be anything you want. And then I will do, this is really generic, but I will do write host, hi, and hit get enter. Boom, it just put hi out there on the screen a whole bunch of times. You're like, well, what was the point of that? I just want to say hi. No, the point of that was that now there is a proc variable loaded. So I can do dollar sign proc dot ws. And that is the working set uh, for that particular object. So that gets me one of the processes out in a variable format so I can play with it. Also, while I'm up here in the um, uh, the ISC now, or the, the script editor portion, I can tab complete, right? Dollar sign W, there's S. So that's an advantage to just doing something like this. It just forces it to iterate so that way the IntelliSense and all that knows what is uh, members and what, um, you know, what properties and methods are attached to that so that they can let you work with them. So just a little trick I use. All right, let's clear our screen. All right, so if proc uh, working set divide by one MB. So uh, working set is actually stored in bytes. Once again, just from playing with a variable, I figured that out. And so PowerShell has these built in, and we've talked about them before, operators where I can say divide that by MB, one MB, so then that way what? Now it is going to be stated in megabytes. I could do it in gigabytes or terabytes or kilobytes. Um, all of those work. I just converted this one to megabytes. I don't know. Anyway, so if processing uh, working set in megabytes is greater than 100, so if it's greater than 100 megabytes, then we want to run this uh, lower portion. So that's a pretty standard if statement. Remember to you, anytime you're doing these type of comparisons, we use words, right? So dollar, or, uh, dash GT. We don't use the uh, alligator or the, 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 the scary little symbols that you were taught back in elementary school. Especially don't get yourself in trouble. People are really bad about this. I do it all the time. If proc WSS1B equals 100, what does that do? That reassigns all of this to 100. That is bad, right? It would be dash EQ. Don't get yourself in trouble. All right, so we're going to do greater than. Okay, so now that we've done that, here we're going to finally work with that array. So we're going to say dollar sign array plus equals. So what does plus equals do, right? That takes the current array uh, variable and then just adds to it additional information. So in this case, right now, the first pass through, there's nothing in there. But as we work through, there'll be more and more, but they're just going to stack those in there nice and neat because we're saying just keep adding in there instead of, um, you know, concatenating or overwriting it, right? If we take out the plus, and I do this sometimes when I'm writing the script too fast, then it would just, what would be in there at the end would be just the last value, right? Um, okay, so plus equals. So dollar sign array plus equals. All right, this is a new commandlet for us, but it's called new object. And so new object allows us to create our own PS object, our own PowerShell object. All right, we've gotten used to working with the objects, you know, when we get a item off the file system or uh, a process as an object, right? Everything inside of PowerShell's object, that's what we work with. Well, this is our first opportunity, but we're actually going to create our own object. And when we create our own object here, we're going to have it be the property, or where the properties for that object are going to be, we're going to create process name and working set as properties of that object. Now, the way that we're doing that is we're saying dash property, this little uh, at symbol and then the curly brace, right, begin and end down here, that is actually a hash table. And so what that's saying is, you know, a hash table, we're, under, uh, we're telling PowerShell, here comes a bunch of information, it's all going to be separated, but you need to kind of iterate, work your way through all of these things instead of me having to do this process over and over and over again. So in that hash table, there's two properties. There's going to be, we're going to create a property named process name, and we're going to set it equal to, right? So we do want to use the equal sign, and we're going to do that to process, uh, proc name. So the current process in the array, um, we're going to use name, and then we're going to do a new line, right? So this means I'm done with all of that, do something new. And so we're also then going to set the working set property to process.ws, which we know is the working set uh, value. Notice here I didn't convert it back to megs. I just took the value, and you could have converted it if you wanted, whatever. All right, so that's going to run through a whole bunch of times. So let's, let's run all of this. So we'll highlight this, and we'll hit this little guy that runs the selection. And we'll let that run. We'll clear our screen, and then we'll say what? Let's type in dollar sign array, and let's see what's in there. So here you can see an array. There's a bunch of um, 
objects in here, and each one of those objects has two properties. Property process name, right? So Cam Recorder, Camtasia Studio, Chrome, and working set, right? Which we know is the amount of memory, and then there's the value for that. So we were able to put all of those into um, this array uh, a variable, name, an array variable named array. <laughs> That's the irony of my problem. But now that we've done that, which is pretty cool stuff, we can uh, take that because my goal in my migration project was to get it out. So what did I do? I said dollar sign array. So take that, push it over here, and select out the process name and the working set. And then we're going to export that to a CSV called file.csv. I'm going to call this file2 just so it doesn't mess up where I was doing the demo. So let's run this line and see what happens. All right, well, nothing here, but now if we type in file2csv, over in my other window, Excel is going to open. And so here is file2. And so now we have a nice comma-separated values file, uh, which defaults to do Excel. I can open a notepad just as easily with all of that information, right? Here's our two property columns, uh, right? So process name and working set, and the value for each of the objects. So once again, in my migration, I had here's the old URL, and then here's the new URL that thing, everything got moved to. And I wrote it all out to a file just like this, because in a minute, we're gonna look at how we then pull that back in in a script that I ran later uh, to take advantage of that. So pretty cool, right? And you know, this is a case of where I'm using this to log some very uh, simplistic information. Other things you might do, uh, next time I use this actually, I think, is I'm gonna use it as a, uh, write myself a log file uh, with the errors and stuff, right? Because I could do, you know, um, I can put anything in here I want. I can do any PowerShell that I want to uh, operate on and then just create some values and then put those values into properties and write them out to my CSV files. There's a lot of flexibility here you know, this is a very simplistic example, but this shows you kind of the beginnings of getting it all into an array and then taking that array and creating a CSV file, which I then sent off to my customer and said, hey, here's all the uh, files you need to fix. So that was the way I, I ran it in my migration. All right, so now that all that is in there, let's look at the, uh, the reverse. How would we get all that information back? So here I create another array, CSV import, right? And we'll add, boom, boom. And I'm going to import file to CSV. And so if we do uh, this line, let's clear our screen off again. What are we going to get? We're going to get CSV import. All right, we get the same exact things that was in the array before. Clearly in the same window, this makes no sense to do whatsoever. But in my process, it was a multi-week process, right? So on day seven, I created this CSV file. And then on day... 13, I needed the CSV file to uh, do some future work. So, uh, but for us, clearly doesn't work. All right, so that gets it in here. And so then now that you've got all of the stuff back, right, we can play with that just as easy. So here's an example. You should understand what this one does just perfectly, but we'll talk about it anyway. So what do we do here? For each object in CSV import, right? So remember, this could be anything you want. This could be, you know, we'll change this to each, uh, dog. I mean, it really doesn't matter, right? And then we just need to change the instances of where I used it to dog, for each dog in working sets. All right, so for each dog in CSV import, so create a variable uh, named dog each time uh, for each object that's in there. And I just wrote out to the screen, right, host process name dog uh, dot process name, right? So that's how I'm specifying the current object and then the process name uh, property, just the same way, way we work with properties all the other time. And then working set dog, uh, or dark sign dog here, working set, same thing. And it did. So it said process name, cam recorder, working set, blah. Process name, cam studio, Camtasia Studio, which I use to record these and I love. Uh, working set, 508. And so you can see all the processes going uh, down my machine. Lots of slack. Slack, don't love that. But that's how you get it back in there. So in my scenario for the customer migration on day 13, what did I end up doing was I pulled that file back in and then I would get uh, a URL and then I would uh, run a little uh, matching query that I wrote that said, all right, go look for this URL in this file that I imported. And then when I find it, get uh, set the, uh, the variables value to the, the new column ID instead of the old column ID, which is what I was searching on. Uh, so I called it my mapping file. It was mapping.csv. 
And uh, that was how I iterated through all that uh, data later on and did all the fixing up of uh, when I moved. So pretty easy. All right. Now, if you're looking at this, you're like, man, this is really terrible and ugly. I kind of agree with you. Um, so another way to do this, right, so CSV import. And then you can use FT, which is for format table. I probably should have been a good boy and typed in, oh, format table. Oh, that would be more correct. So format table, and I use the auto size parameter. And so it just made the two columns uh, nice and pretty for me. Um, just a little trick, nothing, uh, nothing to do there. Right, because this this line right here, this is nothing we would ever actually do. Right, there's 17 better ways to get this information out and display it, but this is just reminding you, you can work with those objects um, and call their properties directly like that. The other thing that I want you to look at is this one right here. So let's clear our screen. So you can also call the items in the array by the uh, order or the the number, you know, the item number in there. Right. So in my particular array, I've got um, I don't, I don't know. Let's do it real quick. CS import dot count. So there's 35 things in there. So I can call any one of those 35 things directly, right? I can say CSV import, and then we do a uh, little bracket guy here. We'll do 18 and close this out. And so Dropbox is the 18th thing, or the 18th uh, object in there. Or actually, it's the 19th object, right? Because one of the things you remember is that. There's nothing at 35, but I just told you there's 35 in there. That's because PowerShell started with zero, right? Cam recorder is in zero, so 34 is the last number you can call. Um, so this was something else I had to do in my little script because I was iterating through. I had two collections. I had one collection was the um, all the old objects, and one was all the new objects. And so I was iterating through all the new objects with a uh, for each uh, loop, just like we showed up above. But then I needed to call the um, the old objects so I could get some uh, information, right? So I could do some matching. And so I couldn't like do this whole, you know, um, dollar sign dog for two different variables at the same time. You can't have a for loop inside of a for loop. I mean, you can, but not, and have them like stay in synchron synchronization. So I ended up, um, having to call the old ones by their numbers. So I just did a count and I knew where I was in my count. So I could call it directly by its number. Whereas I was calling the other one, right? I was doing, you know, something like this. I was like dollar sign CSV import and then dollar sign dog dot process name. And I was matching on the two of those. Um, right, because these two ended up being able to match because they were, you know, this was the current dog and I had a little counter going. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to get into the logic of all that. Hopefully in a later video, I'm going to do a detailed migration video. But right now, we're just trying to learn. And so the thing I want you to learn is that when you're working with uh, an array like this, you can always call directly the, uh, the item that you want by its number. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Well, I think that's everything for today. I was... Uh, just a little quick, easy trick I wanted to show you guys. Make sure you get your introduced arrays. If you have questions, things you want to see different, uh, parts of the video you want to see me do more of, just leave comments down below. I'm always happy to. Uh, also, don't forget to hit the like button over here. It always uh, keeps me motivated to make more of these. I, I like my likes. Um, so, And as always, if I can help you do any PowerShell projects or uh, any of that other fun stuff, you can always reach out to me at Bold Zebras. So thanks. Have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording.